Hi, this is Jason Taylor with the Project of the Way Assessment Team, and today I'm going to talk a bit about the Stain 9 score scale. In a previous video, I discussed the norm reference scores and what those, what those mean and what the benefit of using them are. And today I'm going to be a little bit more specific and talk about the system that Project Lead the Way is going to use in the future, and that is the, the Stain 9 score scale. So as you can see, um, the basis behind the Stain 9 score scale is that all scores of student achievement are going to fall within a normal distribution. One of the benefits, actually, of using Stain 9s is that we can assume that uh, student scores and student performance is going to fall within that normal distribution. It's something I actually talked about in the previous video as well. So then once those scores are in that, uh, that normal distribution, the nice thing that we can do then is divide that normal distribution up into various segments. And so as you can see here, um, a Stain 9 of 1 is at the lower end, and then a stain nine of nine is at the lower, at the upper end, excuse me. So high end of, of student ability on the right, and then low end of student ability on the left. You can tell that there are many more students in the, the middle of this group, so right here, just based on the way that the normal distribution is broken up. Um, you have a, a very large percentage of students that are in the, the average group, the four, fives, and sixes you're going to have a, a smaller percentage of students in the above average group, um, that's the 7s, 8s, and 9s, and then you're going to have about the same number in the um, below average group, the 1s, 2s, and 3s. And so I'm just going to mark those in here right now. So this up here would be our average group. Average group. And then over here we're going to have um, above average And this is going to be below average over here. Now, as I mentioned before in the previous video, I'm basically assigning verbal scales to a numerical scale. So ones, twos, and threes are this below average or below proficient. Four, fives, and six fall into this average group, and then seven, eight, and nine fall into this above average group. So that's how they're broken up, and, and the basis for breaking them up is standard deviations. So the next part that I'm going to actually show you is how to derive the state 9 scales. And we, we utilize something called a z-score. And that is, um, we're actually able to, to determine the z-scores by knowing the population means and the population standard deviations. So the way that we actually develop the z-scores is as follows. Um, we're first going to start out with the observed scores, and these are the scores that the students actually get on the test. So that's the observed score. And then we're going to convert the observed score into a z-score, which actually can be very useful to look at. I can talk about a little bit more about those. And then from the z-score, we convert that into a stay 9 score. And for those that are wondering, stay 9 um, basically stands for standard 9, as there are, it's a, st it's a standard scale, and there are nine of uh, nine different categories, and so it's a standard 9. So that's an easy way to remember it, stay 9. So as I mentioned, the, the three components that we will need in order to first start with the z-scores is Project Lead the Way will collect all of the national data and we are going to have the observed scores, the individual student observed scores, those are X, the national mean, and that's going to be a population mean because we're going to have all of the information from all of the students and so that's this component right there. That is the uh, national mean, that's mu over here, I should have mentioned it, but this is the observed score, that's X. And then we're going to have the national standard deviation. So basically, on average, um, how far are the observed scores from the, the mean score? And that, that standard deviation is uh, sigma right there. That's sigma. So then what we do is, in order to develop the individual student z-score, we take the observed score x, we subtract out the national mean, mu, and we divide that value by the standard deviation that's going to give us a z-score. Now z-scores are on a scale that's going to look like this. I'll try to draw it in here. Z-scores are going to be on a scale where 0 is at the center 
and then you're going to have students that did better than average over on the right side and those scores are generally going to be between um, you know zero and three for students that did better than average and on the left side you're going to have other other scores that are negative values and those are going to be negative one negative two negative three and so the z-score is going to show how many standard deviations basically that student um, that student fell from the mean score so if they got a z-score if they got a z-score of of one that means that they scored one standard deviation from the mean higher than the mean if they got a z-score of a negative 0.25 that just means that they have a, a z-score or their, their score was you know a quarter of a standard deviation below the national mean so in and on the, among themselves actually they're very very useful however it's kind of difficult to to give a, a score of a zero or a negative score value on a test to a student that's why we actually convert them into something else and that's the stay nine and so the way in which we go from a z-score to stay nine is we divide up the the, the z-scores into buckets so as I mentioned, the, the lowest performing students are down in the, the ones, twos, and threes. The average students are in the four, fives, and six, and the highest performing in the seven, eight, and nine. And so all of the, the negative z-scores are going to be between one and five. All of the positive z-scores are going to be between five and nine. So if a student, you, you basically you'd make a list of all the students, and I'll show an example of this, but what you're going to have is you're going to have a list of observed, and then you're going to have a list of z-scores, and then you can have make a list of stay nine scores. Then you can say, okay, my student's observed score was a, a 10. And so that means that their Z score is a negative two. And that means their stay nine is going to be a one. And the way that you, you determine that is you just find out where it falls out into this bucket. And so if a student gets a Z score of a positive 0.25, and so let's say they, they have a, a positive 0.25 z-score that converts you follow this down until you find it positive 0.25 um, that would be a 6 now what you're gonna find is you're gonna say okay is positive 0.25 is that a 5 or is that a 6 it's not gonna be positive 0.25 exactly you're gonna have some z-score like 0.25 one seven five nine that's going to be the z-score don't round when you're making your calculations basically and so 0.251 is greater than 0.25 and so you're going to have the uh, they're going to get a z-score of a six so you would do that for all of your students and we would do that for all the students in the country we would go down and we would say okay the student had a, a 0 0.60 uh, that means they're going to get a stain nine of a six the student had a negative 0 0.60 that means they get a stain nine of a four and we just and it's very easy to do this once you have a uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Basically, is, is one of the easiest ways in which you can do it. Now, I'm going to show an example of what what we would do um, if you had if you wanted to figure this out for a classroom. And so, I'll show an example of some observed test scores, and then we can convert them into the z scores, and then convert them those z scores into um, the actually the the stay nines themselves.